Hi, my name is Steve Tegler. I'm a director of systems engineering in VMware's cloud native apps uh, business unit. And this Lightboard session is around the conversation of virtual machines and containers. And so I'm going to do a little compare and contrast and talk about how they may be perceived the same, but they're you know, fundamentally different technologies. And if we take a look over on this side, this will be the virtual machine side here. Uh, if we take a look at the VM side, we've got physical infrastructure, we've got the operating system, and then we've got uh, the application. And if you look um, around where, um, where the interface is for virtual machines, it's really down, uh, down at this level down here, where here you can think of this as kind of the, the virtual machine level here, and then right below it, it obviously runs on a uh, hypervisor. Now, arguably, this could be vSphere, uh, NSX, and also uh, vSAN if we're going to talk about the entire VMware SDDC if we want to virtualize all infrastructure. And in fact, we've got our virtual machine here. And if we take a look at, at this operating system here, so the good news is that when it's running on a virtual machine, you know, it has a fairly ubiquitous, call it virtual hardware layer uh, that it talks to. So what that means is that as a virtual machine, I've got a limited number of NICs, or storage uh, interfaces that I actually have to talk to. So if you think about the total number of drivers that I need to install in this operating system, it's actually pretty small because there's not a lot of um, permutations down at the VM level. Okay, so it keeps this operating system, uh, in effect, pretty, pretty simple. So there's you know, really kind of less overhead here, so to speak, with the operating system interacting with the, with the infrastructure. So, Second piece, um, which could be obvious about the virtual machine, is that you, know, you can size it however you want. So depending on what the end workload is and, and how big the operating system that interacts with the VM is, you can size that however you want, so you're not bound by physical infrastructure. These should all be things that you know, most of us are very familiar with, uh, given most of us understand uh, server virtualization as it's uh, obviously very mature. Now, so that's the virtual machine, what it presents up to the operating system. But now let's take a look at from the hypervisor here below. What does the hypervisor do? What is it, you know, it's, a, it's quite a workhorse on its own. So from this standpoint, it has to be responsible for interacting with all different types of NIC cards from all different types of hardware, right? Same thing from a storage perspective, right? If I got a RAID adapter in there or whatnot, I got to be able to interact with that. Speaking of RAID adapters, I'm probably going to need some sort of an agent um, that actually monitors that RAID card or monitors hardware in the actual physical host. So I'm going to need to load a bunch of uh, agents, not to mention maybe some kernel modules and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot that this hypervisor is doing and quite frankly masking from uh, the operating system uh, above it. So here we are, we can load all this stuff in the hypervisor, we can kind of fill it up with what we need to um, while maintaining the simplicity here. Okay. So that's, you know, from a virtual, uh, virtual machine standpoint, you know, this is obviously, um, this is kind of a big value prop we've been living with for, you know, 15 or so years now. So let's take a look at the container side of the house here, okay? And so the big difference here is where containers live and where does that technology live? And so uh, I'm going to quickly, um, I'm going to quickly wipe this and I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a change here. Okay, so you can see I modified this stack just a little bit. Um, I've actually slimmed down the operating system here. So um, in effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually load the Docker engine in this operating system here. And what that's going to allow me to do, it's going to actually allow me to run containers. It creates a space uh, where each container can run individually. Now we go up here uh, to the application. So uh, you know, a large benefit of containers is the ability to package up a lot of the dependencies the app needs from the operating system in one container. And so here we are. Um, we've got our application. And so right below it, we're going to go ahead and put in the operating system uh, dependencies here. And we're going to package that up. And that is going to be what the uh, container what gets built and created. So this would be the container image. And so what that means is that the actual operating system down here, um, in effect, doesn't need to, um, uh, it, uh, you know, 
Uh, it doesn't need to have a lot of the OS dependencies. If we go up into this stack, I need to go over and figure out all of my dependencies up here for this application to interact with. So middleware, um, different patching levels, packages, and all sorts of things. I got to figure out how to uh, load all that in there, right? And I need some, I need some probably some automation over here. So like configuration management. So things like Ansible and Chef and Puppet, uh, those types of tools load in all these dependencies on top of the OS so the application can run. Over in containers, I don't need that. I can package up all those dependencies as a part of the, of the Docker file, which is where that container image um, uh, runs. So you can see there's a, there's a different abstraction. It happens at a different space. Down here, I'm separating myself between the hardware and uh, the operating system. Here, it's more of an operating system abstraction where I'm going to have a simplified base OS that everyone uh, can run on, and then you can run all sorts of, of different containers. So now, what if I take a look at this a little further? What about this relationship here between this operating system and the physical infrastructure? And so this is, um, this is sometimes seen as something uh, that um, I can potentially do um, to create a more simplistic uh, environment, but I, I'd argue that we might be adding some complexity here. So if I have an operating system that needs to interact with physical hardware, what are all these things I need to do um, that I demonstrated over here, like what the hypervisor is doing? Well, I have a, probably a specific NIC card, a specific chip, storage adapter, agents, all these kernel modules. I'm going to need to load those into this operating system and, and basically fill it up with that technology. Um, uh, in addition, all of the different uh, you know, specific uh, NICs and drivers and, and the sizing, right? It's fixed. The sizing of this operating system is fixed on the infrastructure. And in a lot of cases, uh, you know, you'll get a request uh, if, you're the, if you're on the uh, virtualization team that, hey, uh, I need just a couple of VMs to do a quick you know, test. Uh, in this case, when I'm interacting with physical infrastructure, I'm going to have to, um, in effect, uh, you know, be stuck with whatever that physical size is. So the argument, and I realize I work for VMware, um, you know, we're heavily into virtualization, uh, but the argument I'm going to make is that there's still quite a bit of benefit that can be achieved by having a hypervisor or, or a hypervisor, or really the, the VMware software defined data center under here. Um, and this virtual machine level. Let's take this container host operating system. Let's put the minimal amount of uh, drivers and, and technology in there to interact at the virtual machine level. And let's mask all the other hardware specific stuff with a hypervisor. So hopefully this gives a good explanation of where the virtual machine and hypervisor lives versus uh, container technology. Uh, thanks for watching.